Hello learners and welcome to my session on Jom Yen Conference 1990. My name is Russell D'Souza and I come from Nirmala Institute of Education, a college of teacher education in Goa. So the World Conference on Education for All, abbreviated as EFA, also known as the, the Jom Yen Conference, was held from 5th to 9th March 1990 at Jomian in Thailand. It's a beautiful place. Now the preamble of the world of the World Conference was World Declaration on Education for All, Meeting Basic Learning Needs. Which were the countries that participated or were a part of the EFA World Conference? Now there were around 155 member states of the United Nations that participated actively in this World Conference on Education because it was found to be extremely important for all countries across the globe. Now, who were the key players to work towards the Education for All movement? Definitely, without key players, you can never get the ball rolling. So, who were the key players? Well, there were five key players who pioneered this whole movement. And these five players are the UNESCO, UNICEF, World Bank, the United Nations Development Program, and the United Nations Population Fund. So these were the five key players. Now these originators of EFA insisted on making education a top priority on the development agenda, setting not only a good example for the United Nations Corporation, but also mobilizing governments across the globe, civil society, education professionals, and to a lesser degree, the private sector. Well, why didn't the education for all happen? There has to be a reason for something to happen, because without a reason, nothing happens. So what was the reason? What were the thoughts? What were the, reason? What were the ideas that led to the EFA? Well, the nations of the world, speaking to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, asserted that everyone has a right to education. Everyone has a right to education. They said that despite efforts by countries around the globe to ensure the right to education for all, certain realities persisted. For instance, more than half the population of children that comprised girls had no access to primary schooling at all. Women were illiterate and functional literacy was a significant problem in all countries, whether the countries were industrialized and developed or the developing countries or the third world countries. So we see that these were some of the major problems. Okay, let me take you to some other reasons. The world's adults were found to have no access to printed knowledge. A sizable population of the world's adults. New skills and technologies that could improve the quality of their lives and help them shape and to adopt social and cultural change. More than 100 million children and countless adults failed to complete basic education programs, while millions only satisfy the attendance requirements in different courses in which they had registered, but they failed to acquire the essential knowledge and skills that the community needs today. So what were the outcomes of the EFA conference. Now the EFA conference through its deliberations came around or rather they drafted 10 articles which were organized under three headings or sections or categories as follows. So what is the purpose for education for all? And under this you will see that there is a single article which talks about meeting basic learning needs. Now, this is the structure of the whole document. The second is education for all. 
an expanded vision and a renewed commitment. And under this, you will see several articles. For example, Article 2 that talks about shaping the vision. Article 3 that talks about understanding excess and promoting equity. Article 4 that focuses on learning. Article 5 talks about broadening the means and scope of basic education. Article 6 which talks about enhancing the environment for learning and Article 7 that talks about strengthening partnerships. And the last one is education for all, the requirements. If at all we are going to have basic education and it's going to help a cross-section of the population, then there are certain requirements that need to be met. And so under this we have three articles. Article 8 that talks about developing a supportive policy. Article 9 that talks about mobilizing resources because without resources it is not possible for any effort to succeed. And Article 10 that talks about strengthening international solidarity because education for all is not meant for a country or for a particular race or for a particular people. It is meant for the whole world. And so, if you look very carefully at all these sections, right from the first one to the last one, you will find certain keywords here. And the keywords are basic learning needs, expanded vision, a renewed commitment, and requirements. Uh, we will now have a look at what all these mean. So, education for all, the purpose. So, Article 1 that talks about meeting basic learning needs. So, every child, every person, every adult shall be able to benefit from educational opportunities designed to meet their basic learning needs. This means that every adult, every youth or every child would benefit from the opportunities that are created to equip them with basic learning. And these needs comprise essential learning tools such as literacy, oral expression, numeracy and problem solving. So these are the basic learning skills that are required. And the basic learning content is concerned with knowledge, skills, values and attitudes. So if you look very carefully, you will see that learning tools and learning uh, content is extremely important, which is required by human beings to be able to survive, to develop to their full capacities, to live and to work in dignity, to participate fully in development, to improve the quality of their own lives and the lives of others, to make informed decisions and to continue learning and be lifelong learners. Satisfaction of these basic learning needs would lead to something and this something is it would lead to the promotion of education of others. It would empower individuals to respect and build upon their collective cultural, linguistic and spiritual heritage. For instance, if you look at India, India has a rich cultural heritage. It's a linguistically rich country and a spiritually rich country as well. It's not only India, but there are many other countries which have their own characteristic features. It would further the cause of social justice. It would help us to look critically at the environment and to protect the environment. It would teach us to be tolerant towards social political and religious systems which are different from the ones uh, that we uphold. We would learn to uphold humanistic values and human rights, work for international peace and solidarity in an interdependent, interconnected world. We we'll look at the second article which is concerned with shipping the vision. Now, please be very careful learners that we are looking at expanded vision and renewed commitment and under this the article shaping the vision. So to serve the basic learning needs that we have seen in article 1, 
we have to shape our vision. Our vision needs to expand beyond the present resources, beyond the instructional structures that we have, the curricula that we make use of, and the conventional delivery systems, so that we can achieve our vision, not forgetting building on the, on the existing practices. So, the expanded goals entail broadening the means and scope of basic education, strengthening partnerships, strengthening partnerships between nations, strengthening partnerships between governments, strengthening partnerships between various social organizations, cultural organizations, educational institutions, between civil society, focusing on learning, a shift to enhance the performance of a learner, enhancing the environment for learning, creating a congenial learning climate for learners, be it a child, be it an adult, universalizing excess and promoting equity. So, the educational opportunity to be equal to everybody and everybody has free and fair access to learning. Article 3 talks about universalizing access and promoting equity. So, basic education should be provided to all children, youth and adults. But quality needs to be expanded and monitored. And if there is any disparity, it has to be reduced so that it does not become an impediment. All children, youth and adults must be given an opportunity to achieve and maintain an acceptable level of learning for basic education to be equitable. There is an urgent priority to improve the quality of education for girls and women and to remove every obstacle that hampers their active participation. All gender stereotyping in education has to be eliminated. When I say gender stereotyping, I am basically talking about the practice of ascribing specific attributes, characteristics or roles. We have a habit of saying that it's only boys that are good in mathematics. The girl is weak or the lady is weak or the, or, or the gent or the male makes all the decisions. The woman is not involved. So gender stereotyping to be done away with, to be eliminated. Attention needs to be given to the learning needs of the disabled. And at the same time, an active commitment must be made to remove the educational disparities, undeserved groups like the poor, the street and working children, rural and remote population, nomads and migrant workers, indigenous people, ethnic, racial, linguistic minorities, refugees, those who are displaced by war and people under occupation should not suffer any discrimination in access to learning opportunities. Article 4 focuses on learning. Whether people actually learn as a result of these opportunities, that is whether they incorporate useful knowledge, reasoning ability, skills and values will tell us whether the expanded educational opportunities have translated into meaningful development or not. So the focus of basic education therefore must be on actual learning, acquisition and outcomes rather than just enrollment or continued participation in programs and completing these programs with certification. So active and participatory learning approaches need to be embedded in our learning. Article 5 talks about broadening the means and scope of basic education. The diversity, complexity and changing nature of basic learning needs of children, youth and adults necessitates broadening and constant redefinition of the scope of basic education to include the following components. Learning begins at birth. This means that there has to be early childhood care and education. Primary schooling is the main delivery system for basic education of children outside the family. Therefore, it must be universal. Every child should have access to this primary education. It should be available. And at the same time, 
the culture of the place, the reasoning of the place should be a part of primary schooling. The basic learning needs of youth and adult are diverse and should be met through a variety of delivery systems, skill training, apprenticeship, formal and non-formal education programs in health, nutrition, population, agricultural techniques, environment science, technology, family life, including fertility and awareness and other societal issues. All available instruments and channels of information and communication like radio, TV and other media and social action could be used to help convey essential knowledge and inform and educate people on social issues. Article 6 talks about enhancing the environment for learning. So learning does not take place in isolation. Societies therefore must ensure that all learners receive nutrition, healthcare, and general physical and emotional support they need in order to participate actively and benefit from their education. Knowledge and skills that will enhance the learning environment of children should be integrated into community learning programs for adults. The education of children and their parents or other caretakers is mutually supportive and this interaction should be used to create for all a learning environment of vibrancy and warmth. Article 7 talks about strengthening partnerships. National, regional and local educational authorities have a unique obligation to provide basic education for all. But they cannot be expected to supply every human, financial or organizational requirements for this task. So new and revitalized partnerships at all levels therefore become necessary. So partnerships among subsections and forms of education, educational personnel, partnerships between education and other government departments, including planning, finance, labor, communication, and other social sectors, partnerships between government and non-governmental organizations, the private sector, the local communities, religious groups, and families. So this tells us that when you talk about partnerships, partnerships need to be built between these different groups. If you want basic education to be a success, then partnerships is extremely important. Education for all the requirements. So here we have Article 8 that talks about developing a supportive policy context. So supportive policies in the social, cultural and economic sectors are required in order to realize the full provision and utilization of basic education for individual and societal improvement. So this tells us that supportive policies in the social sector, the cultural sphere and the economic life need to be drawn up so that this can give an impetus to basic education. Suitable economic, trade, labor, employment and health policies will enhance learning's incentives and contribute to societal development. Societies should also ensure a strong intellectual and scientific environment for basic education. So this tells us that a lot of support is required if this basic education is to succeed. Article 9 talks about mobilizing resources. We know that without resources, any effort is futile. And so, resources become a very important factor for us. So when I talk about mobilizing resources, so for meeting the basic learning needs of all, 
it is essential to mobilize existing resources. When I say existing resources, I mean the institutions of learning which are there, the human potential which is there, the infrastructure which is there, the curricula which is there, other instructional supports which are there, public and private voluntary support. Society has to contribute to make and recognize that the time, the energy and the funding that they put into this great social cause can enhance the future of a country. It can make a country. So enlarged public sector support means drawing on the resources of all the government agencies responsible for human development. Well, this tells us that the government alone cannot do everything. We also need support from society. And when support comes from society, you can look at the growth and development of society. Whatever we put into the growth and development of society will only help to better the country. Article 10 talks about strengthening international solidarity. Now, without a convergence, without meeting of ideas of the international fraternity, the education for all cannot be a success. And that is the reason why there is a need to strengthen international commitment, international reasoning, international feeling, so that international solidarity can, can serve as an impetus for education for all. So, meeting basic needs constitutes a common and universal human responsibility. It requires international solidarity and equitable and fair economic relations in order to redress existing economic disparities. All nations have valuable knowledge and experiences to share for designing effective educational policies and programs. Substantial and long-term increase in resources for basic education will be needed as we start progressing in this great cause for education. Basic learning needs of adults and children must be addressed wherever they exist. And all nations across the world have to work together, have to work in unison, have to work unitedly to resolve conflicts and strife. Conflicts and strifes that happen within the country, that happen across countries, to end military occupation, to settle displaced population. Today we know that in several countries, we have displaced population. There is a lot of conflict, a lot of strife. There is military occupation. This country should facilitate the displaced population, probably to return to their countries of origin and ensure that their learning needs are not hampered, but rather they should ensure that their learning needs are met. So only a stable and a peaceful environment can create the conditions in which every human being, child and adult alike, may benefit from the goals of this declaration. So if we go back to all the, the 10 articles, it tells us that every single child, every single adult and every single youth should have access to basic education. Now, this basic education would enhance the quality of living and life. We know that a person who is inspired, who is educated, can make a far better contribution to society, to societies beyond the society in which he lives, and can help to better the world. But for all these things to happen, we need synergy and we need energy. Without synergy, nothing can occur. And therefore, governments across the world 
local governments, local institutions, local bodies need to work together. They need to forget, they need to shed off the differences that they have and they need to work for a common citizenry, a citizen of the world. Because if we do not look at this goal, then our best efforts towards education for all will not be a success. It will not be a reality. It would just remain as a dream. We know that today there are several difficulties, there are several impediments, there are several barriers. But can we live with these barriers? Can we live with these impediments? It's no. So we need to make conscious efforts to harness the potential, to lead the human resource, to look very critically at the curricula that we follow so that we can make modifications. We can bring in the best so that we develop the best and we, and we present to the whole world a person, a citizen, an individual who will contribute towards the world. So learners, I would request you to look at this whole structure. It is a very interesting declaration. It would enhance your perception about education. An education for all. So, wishing you all the very best. Thank you.